portfolio. I, will, I am a, a principal lecturer here in, in Health Technology Program, and I will be your co-host with Rob during these two weeks. So, I need to uh, do a little introduction to the course. Actually, I changed the title of my presentations to Introduction to Self-Care and Technology. So, this was the plan of the presentation. Uh, we will first discuss about what we have done here in Metropolia to prepare this IP. Then some maybe statistics about the aging economics, chronic diseases. Then a solution is, is given to this all that, that Vesa also pointed out. And then I will tell something about self-care, different approaches, perspectives, ecosystem, and a little bit technology also. And if you have time, we can look a little bit this ambient as it's living technology. Okay, this was uh, shortly what we have done in, in Metropolia to prepare this IP. So we got, uh, had this, these two uh, <coughs> different kind of themes. I think these are quite familiar with all of you. Quite similar that the keynotes are in these two weeks. So we were looking at different kind of technologies related to this ambient that is the living theme. And then we did a project work, uh, did a little bit of study about research products, services and things like that. And the idea uh, as in the health technology program in Metropolia, the idea is to think these all issues at, at simultaneously. So technology, business, ecosystem and customers perspective. So not too much of technology. That is quite crucial in this field. So you know the statistics quite well. Uh, there is uh, one picture about uh, uh, aging, and on the on the right hand side there's a uh, depend dependency ratio. That means that's how many people are per, how many work uh, people in, in working life is compared to the others. Better speakers was that there was dependency ratio would be 1.0 in 2047, but this is not so bad. But anyway, the, the, this is quite dramatic that we are going, now we have, in, this is Europe, so now we are in 2.1 people in working force compared to, or versus the people not in the, in the working force, so children and uh, senior citizens and others. So this is quite dramatic, dramatical. And also, uh, the amount of uh, experts in this field are retiring. So this is quite a high figure that in Switzerland, 75% of general pra practitioners retire by 2025. Healthcare costs are going up very rapidly. This is per year, almost maybe five to ten percent per country per year. That's also quite dramatic. And at the moment, about nine percent of GDP is on health, and thirty to forty percent of these healthcare expenses are are spent 
on people aged 65 or older. And this will be much higher than we are going to 2025. And above this uh, aging of Europe, the chronic conditions is, is the situation in this is even worse as if you can use that kind of word. As you can see, the estimate is that from 2012 to 2017, the number of chronic diseases, or number of people with chronic diseases will go up around 7 million people. Aging is only 1 million at that time. So this is even more crucial to the healthcare costs. So these kind of un unhealthy lifestyles are very big challenge in the people. <coughs> okay, the solution. It's quite obvious that the self-care is the solution. So the idea is that, uh, that care of chronic conditions, including aging, is transferred outside hospital environment. And empower patients to manage their condition better and more independently. I think these are the two key issues. When we are developing some kind of technology, we have to uh, understand these issues. It's not very simple because there is this different kind of perspectives, system, customer, and professional perspectives. One thing is, is for sure that we need some technology and tools to survive in, in the next few years. Okay, the new way and traditional way. The new way is, is this kind of uh, self-care focused approach and the traditional way is the more uh, doctor-centered approach. That has been uh, for decades and hundreds of years the system that doctor will take care of people. So there is a little bit <coughs> comparison between between these these uh, different approaches. But the main thing is that we are on the transformation phase that we are moving on the doctor center to patient oriented or customer oriented. I would use the, that kind of term. So self care is, is on the middle of this. So empowerment. Uh, traditionally, different kind of health services are based on the needs of system. Where, pass, uh, where the patients have been a passive recipient of the care. But this, this ideology doesn't work in the self-care approach. So effective self-management increases the sense of one's own ability to achieve goals and behavior changes. And the old system doesn't support this kind of mentality. So some statistics, about 97.2% of Finnish people are in the self-care mode. Uh, I made that from the uh, numbers that 2.8% are in home or residential care. So this is quite a big part of the population. Another, another statistic is that people are spending six hours uh, with a healthcare professional per year. So 99.93% are in self-care. So this self-care uh, seems quite obvious. 
maybe the trends are that patients are becoming more active. I think we can call them consumers. And how this will affect on technology. Because it's different to develop technology for consumers that whole system. I think this is very important when you are developing these concepts during this IP. But anyway, tools and technology is needed. Can I have a question yeah. in between? Because you're telling us that 97% uh, of the people are doing self-care. Yeah. And about 99.93% of the time is self-care. Yeah. Uh, but that, then you th you're having an, an idea that everyone needs 100% care? No, no, it's no. Not. So self care is mostly preventive. But, but if, yeah. oh, if only 2.8 percent is in the home, or if it, or, or is that really see them for care? Yeah. Then the rest of the people don't need care at that moment. At that moment, no. So yeah. you don't have 97.2 percent in self care. In self care mode. Okay. So people should be preventive. Do not. Going to these figures, and of course, these figures doesn't uh, include a day spent at hospitals. This is just a regular home and residential care. But the idea is that people are not uh, spending long periods at hospital. But this is a kind of long time care. So care can be even smaller chunks of care, not just 24/7. So this is almost a 24-7 type care. Okay, I have some example about empowerment today. The traditional way. 75% uh, of patients visit appointments. So if you have an appointment, uh, three out of four is going there. 50% uh, of patients use medications as they are prescribed. It's quite a dramatic figure. So 50% Yeah. One example, 40% patients clean their teeth as they should. And 40% of teeth do it in the right way. So 60% of doing it correctly. 30% of patients follow a healthy diet. That is one crucial point of self-care, preventiveness. 25% of patients exercise according to the recommendations. And under 10% of patients are able to permanently lose weight. So this is kind of the old systems or existing systems. How it will empower people. Not very good. So, what is self-care? Taking care of personal health and well-being, preventing diseases, this is care even, and at home environment. This is my definition. And there are different parts of this, this self-care. This is one, one kind of way of showing it. So there's Lots of different kind of functionalities, and and I, I think uh, most of your concepts are in this can be put somewhere in this this kind of picture. So we have self monitoring of different kind of conditions, for example, blood pressure or things like that. Physical and cognitive. Functionality, sleep, hobbies, social relations. By the way, the social relations is, the, I think, one of the most important thing in, in people's health. Work, activity, eating, mouth and teeth, and drugs. So there's different kinds of issues in this self-care. And we need tools and ser services and technology for it. Then there is different kind of uh, point of views to this self-care. 
So from professional point of view, patients, responsibility grows, commitment and compliance to care increases, gear balance is better. For example, if you have different kind of diseases, the balance will be better, not just focusing on one disease at a time. Early prevention, maybe less work from doctor's point. So this is a, quite a uh, dramatic culture change. From systems point of view, I mean healthcare system, society's perspective. Some kind of benefits that the self-care, if it's implemented widely, could bring benefits like this. Less diseases, or diseases at later stage of life. Better care of diseases. Longer at home. Less hospital visits, days spent at hospital, less load, less cost. So from systems point of view, the better health for population would be the idea of self-care. And from, from patients or customers point of view, there is lots of different kind of benefits that could be achieved. Influence on personal health increases. Influence on care plan, for example. Carrying out self-care, monitoring health parameters, and how they develop, and commitment to care. I think this is the commitment to care is, is the most important one. Interest to oneself increases. You can see how the different measures affect your health. You can get feedback, decision support, guidance, motivation, and things like that. So the motivation will increase. The feeling of security. Maybe some automatic monitoring, safer environments, accessibility and availability of different kind of health-related services. So the result would be increased confidence. Better individual health and quality of life would be the primary result of this. Yeah. So how about technology and self-care? There is some kind of things that comes into the mind. Access and management of personal health data. I think that's the, that's one interesting thing because nowadays it's not very often to see our own own data or manage our data. So these kind of personal health records are coming to the markets. In Finland, we have Taltion in concept. This is some support. So if you are doing self-care, you need some kind of support for making decisions. So it has to be some kind of, for example, web-based platform that gives you all these ideas to support your decisions. Because you are do doing the decisions, not the doctor. Or maybe doctor can support those decisions, but you are responsibility of your decision. Then there can be different kind of alarms and events. For example, if you fall down, just, uh, some technology can inform somebody that you have fallen. Or some other events that you should take your drugs or things like that. And remote monitoring. I think that's, this is the one, one important thing in this technology in home environment. So you can do some maybe automatic or other remote monitor. Safety equipment, telehealth, self-diagnostics. So people can even make the self-diagnostics by themselves with some tools, some technology. The communication is important in this, this self-care. So you need some kind of tools to communicate with professionals 
and maybe some other people in the, in the for example, in the same same kind of uh, need for care. Okay, online appointment management, online guidance, instruction, and coaching. I think this health coaching is, is one of the important issues in this. So how to support people doing their, their self-care. Mm -hmm. Then we can use some kind of virtual technology to, to form some kind of groups, maybe even vir virtual receptions, treatments, rehabilitation. We have a lot of technology, technology that can be used for uh, developing these. Drug treatment and monitoring is one, one big issue. We saw that 50% of people are using the medication as, as it should. So there's lots of development to be done in that area. And actually, we have one presentation tomorrow from the Evandos company that will focus on this, this issue. With genetic information, big data is coming. We are get more, more information to support our decisions. Proactive monitoring of symptoms. Maybe we can know beforehand if something will happen in the near future. So there's lots of technology that is needed to to make a self-care ecosystem. There is also some challenges, obviously. The integration is, is one thing. So interoperability, compatibility issues, standardization. Uh, there's all, all, the data is also quite fragmented to different kinds of places. For example, hospital can have their own electronic health records. So the data is fragmented everywhere. And how we can uh, integrate these home monitoring devices into this patient data or electronic health record. I think that's one of the key issues in this. So this doesn't work if the data is fragmented everywhere. And then there is some challenges in, in accuracy and responsibility. So how accurate is the data? If you are doing some kind of home monitoring system or technology, how accurate the data is? Because the, we have used to that kind of situation that if you are measuring something medical, it's, it has to be very accurate. But like Vesa said in the morning, so do we really need so accurate data? I think the answer is no, we don't. Then the responsibility of the follow-up for example, of a treatment or care. Who is responsible? Who is responsible of making a response for that, some, some kind of event? Of course, the people themselves. If you are making patient decision support systems, uh, I think it's quite important to know who is responsible, responsible of the content on those kind of, for example, web-based services. And once again, how to, how to connect the information to patient data and accuracy is, once again, very important. We have maybe very accurate patient data and then we have some data that, for example, our smart, smart watch have measured. So how, how can we combine those? Privacy, security, reliability, safety, usability, simplicity. These are extremely huge issues. For example, when we are taking technology to home environments. Evidence basis. At least in Finland we have, I think we have done a lots of pilots concerning different kind of AAL technology. But they have been very small scale. 
and you really don't get any kind of evidence from the small scale of pilots. So this is kind of egg chicken problem. So you would need information, but can we get the informa real information before we are making a huge transformation of this system? And scaling up is, is a similar thing. So how we can scale up these pilots to, to, to bigger Uh, more challenges uh, related to this technology adoption. So the amount of information increases. We have small, more smart devices. How can we get the information to support our self-care? More and more genetic information is coming to this field. Big data is, is a big issue in this. How can we find the real data out of uh, millions of gigabytes of data. This is also a kind of mind shift to the situation that uh, what is the doctor's role? So nowadays they are doing some kind of measurements and interview, interviews you and make the decisions, but if you have uh, millions of gigabytes of data, you have to make very easy user interfaces and things like that so that data is usable. There's no sense of just storaging millions of gigabytes of data. What kind of data and information is needed? I think that's a one good question. And how it will be used. Information can be used in, in care, processes, services, and things like that. So you should utilize that information to really, for example, do that, how the business is running. Customer orientation is, is important. But nowadays the challenge is that it's, it can be quite difficult to understand who is the customer. How can you be customer oriented if you don't know who the customer is? But in the self-care uh, world, I think it's quite easy to find the customer. So motivation, empowerment, and commitment of all parties to new way of doing things. That is the important thing. And a lack of coordination is also a, quite a challenging issue in this area. So. Who is running this? If you are, we are developing different kind of uh, information systems and things like that. So who is the process owner when changing to this self care? This kind of simplified version of health ecosystem. So the basic is that we have hospital, there is some monitoring devices, electronic health record. <coughs> Situation today maybe. Then we have homes where people are doing self-care. Yeah, maybe some of us have smart devices, maybe even AL technology. Uh, personal health records are coming. So we can combine this information with this personal record. At least in Finland, the patient record archive is, is one of the big projects in Finland called Kanta Hanke. The idea is that uh, we can combine all, the, all of those electronic health records and give, for example, people right to access them. Okay, genomic information is also coming. But still there is something missing. We need services and tools to combine this. It's not enough that we have the data on ourselves and maybe we have some kind of uh, account in some kind of PHR. So we have to combine 
these two walls. We need technology and tools. How to do the health and care plan. Data storage is quite important in this ecosystem. Support for decision making, intelligent symptom assessment, health examination, online health examinations, coaching, virtual clinics, consultations, emergency course measurement data. So we have to combine these two worlds. So there's technology in each of these. Uh, one example of, of this kind of prevention tool is quite simple and it may, may work because of that. So this is a kind of health coaching application made by Duodeck. In so as simple as it looks like, there is a questionnaire on lifestyle, health and mental well-being. Then you will get a report, what kind of risk you have, based on the questionnaire and based on the population data. Then you will get some kind of plan how you should act in the future. Life, lifestyle transformation plan. And then there is coaching, support for what you are doing. Information, encouragement and estimation of the process. So this is, I think, quite quite good example of this kind of web-based process. Of course, you can add lots of information or other technology into that, like a video consulting or some kind of data from from your smart devices. There's a couple of examples, examples how this uh, internet-based self-care works. So this first example is about asthma monitoring. And we can see that, so, or maybe you can't see, but I can explain. So there is different kind of uh, figures. The first one is well-controlled asthma, partly controlled asthma, and the last one is uncontrolled asthma. And this is the internet group, and this is the control group. So we can see that if you have a well-controlled asthma, uh, this internet based application doesn't have so so much meaning. But if you doesn't have well controlled asthma, you can see that so this is measures the daily doses. So this means that the, at the center and then right you can see that the internet group is much higher. So that means that uh, the dose is is on the right level. And conclusion is that it's because of this kind of uh, weekly, weekly self-monitoring. And another one is about the uh, glucohemoglobin levels. And the, uh, the left one, if you have Glucohemoglobin that is very important if you have a diabetes. If you have this value over 7% or under 7%. So this is the hemo glucohemoglobin value on the y-axis and time is on the x-axis. So the conclusion is that long-term use of this kind of glucose monitoring will decrease these glucohemoglobin levels. That is 
extremely important in this chronic disease prevention. Okay. Then I have, I have some slides about ambient assisted living technology. This might be familiar with you, but maybe we will look a couple of examples. Is this ambient assisted living term familiar with you? Yeah. No? Yes? So this is, there is one good definition about AAL. So the idea is to, to uh, give a possibility to people to live at their home as long as possible. And AAL technology can be product, process and service. And it's person-centric, so it's a self-care. <coughs> Self, it suits for this self-care ideology quite well. So the definition is that AAL is the use of ICT in person's daily living and working environment to enable individuals to stay active longer, remain socially connected and live independently. Then we have different kind of technologies. I think we could uh, tell hours of examples of this, but let's look a couple of, couple of examples. Okay, maybe this is the simplest form. So we, the prevention, heart rate monitoring, I think we are all familiar with these, these kind of, uh, application. So if you have smartwatch and, and you are uh, monitoring your heart rate when you are going uh, cycling or running or things like that. So you can keep a track how how you will de develop and things like that. You have different other kinds of activity monitors, for example in your cell phone. This moves app is I think quite familiar to most so it simply tracks how many steps have you taken. But that's a very good indicator how well are you, for example, uh, or how active you are. That has a straight influence on your health. Then you have a little bit other things, uh, activity monitoring. It's a finished product. Uh, Polar measures uh, how you are, how active you are, and it will recommend you that you should walk and things like that if you have, for example, sat down to a long. And then there's these kind of social uh, applications that. For example, different workplaces can compete with the, who is the most active. Actually, these are the right... Uh, if you have a social aspect to this kind of activity monitoring, it is uh, much more uh, likely that the uh, motivation will continue after the two weeks of honeymoon period of the device. So I think the social aspects should be taken into care of this if you want people to be motivated. Then you have different kind of devices. You can measure blood pressure, weight, blood glucose, uh, quality of sleep and things like that. You have reminders that, that, for example, this is a uh, drug reminder. So it will remind you that when you have to take a drug. And this is a little bit maybe more sophi sophisticated 
uh, drug monitoring device. So this is from there one that will we'll do the presentation today. Okay, then we have different kind of products for teleassistance and safety. So we can, we have this red button that we can push and somebody will help us. And then, then we can have a, this kind of smartwatch that is uh, doing a positioning, for example, outdoors. If you are uh, suffering from dementia and you are lost in the woods, it, it can be found. More of the safety system. So we have presentation on Friday from Sapera that is ma making this kind of intelligent stove that can can even can even uh, stop the burn uh, of fire. Then we have different kind of uh, uh, smart garments that can be put, for example, under your under your mattress and they are measuring, for example, sleep quality and other vital parameters. Then we, of course, have this kind of multimedia solutions. You can do your video consulting for, for example, communication between different parties. And you can do some kind of rehabilitation programs and things like that. You read it. And this is one example of that. Then we have this fall detection. If you are falling down, it is extremely important to get help where you are very quickly. Because if you don't, if you don't uh, very uh, traumatic for for old people's health. <coughs> then we have different kind of bioparameter monitoring. It's a plenty of uh, things that you can can measure: weight, glucose level, body temperature, cholesterol, blood oxygen saturation, blood pressure, heart rate, etc. You can do continuous measurements at regular periods or random periods, depending on the profile and things like that. So the idea is to get uh, faster and more real-time, reliable data from the whole memory. Then a little bit similar, you have, for example, Sondi is making bed monitoring devices and systems. We have different kind of... Uh, this is a, I think this is a German product. A sensor that is making these kind of small patches that are measuring your vital signs. We have new fire sensors coming, measure different kind of parameters. You can measure EEG, you can measure sleep. Sleep apnea detection. And this is a kind of insulin pump that can be built for continuous monitoring and, and the pump also delivers the right amount of dose of this medication when needed. Okay, then we have robotics. We have lots of different robotic solutions. We have this kind of, on the right hand side, there's a, this kind of a home health robots that are making different things things for you, maybe making it a little bit easier to live at home. And then we have this kind of social robots that have quite a big influence on us for example, on, on senior life. And from Japan, of course, we have this kind of cyberdyne that is called cyber technology. 
So we have uh, a kind of devices that can help us walk and carry things. Of course, uh, these are uh, quite expensive in home. And then we have different kind of solutions for smartphones, measuring and controlling different kind of things. So, lots of the technologies. And we are hearing more about these technologies later on this week. So and I think they can be placed on this self-care figure. So we need some technology and tools and here are a couple of examples that we will hear more about later this week. So very shortly, uh, Tanstow is a, a UK firm, very large one, at least the biggest in Europe in this, this area, making lots of different kind of devices for, for this, for example, home monitoring. The home monitoring is focused on, on this IP, but they are doing lots of other, thing, uh, other things and devices to this healthcare sector. Then we have Arctic Connect, a Finnish company that is doing a video consultation and they are making a combined presentation. So I think we can see that how these are uh, how these are working together. So the idea of this is to uh, collect different kind of information from the home environment and this will send it to the doctor or hospital. And obviously you can get a video consultation between different parties with that. Drug use and delivery and teleassistance. So the, I think I have talked about this earlier, but uh, Vivaco Watch is a kind of smart watch that is, uh, that can make the alarm without you pushing the button so it's continuously monitoring your your activity and it can make uh, emergency calls if needed but it all also collects for example information about the sleep quality and then we have this uh, intelligence stove and then we have this kind of android based uh, tool for social inter interaction. So these are the companies that will present this week at this IP. Thanks.